If you would, you can turn, be turning your Bibles to the uh, book of 2 Samuel 24. I want to read to you a little bit this morning about Daniel, I mean about David, sorry, about David and uh, some of the things that he got into and troubles and how that, uh, the Lord uh, dealt with him. So it's a, a, a good experience this morning and I hope that I can be a blessing to each one of you as I try to read these uh, scriptures and uh, that we understand more about God's Word. In 2 uh, Second Samuel 24, chapter, uh, chapter 24, verse 1. Again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. Now, hold your place right there, and I want to turn to first, uh, uh, to uh, uh, First Chronicles 21. Uh, verse 1. Notice the difference in the reading, but there's a reason for this. Now notice over here in, 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 in what I just read, and again the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Now in 1 Chronicles 21, 1, and Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Same thing, and it sounds like that uh, Satan is on the side of God, but it's not that way. Satan understood some of the things that was going on in David's heart and some of the things that he was doing, and he uh, he intervened and he he and, and and even God used Satan himself to. But the thing of it was that both he was in, David was encouraged to number Israel. Well, listen, it wasn't nothing wrong <clears throat> with numbering them because uh, the Lord had let. Uh, Moses number the children uh, a time or two but here's the thing of it was that David in his in his condition kind of uplifted himself just a little bit and of course Israel was uh, was not following the Lord like they should and so here's what happened in verse 2 <clears throat> for the king that's David said unto Joab, his, his servant, the captain of the host, which was with, with him, go now through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, and number ye the people, that I may know the number of the people. Now, first of all, uh, David had no need, really, of having the number of people because all the time when, when he had to go up to battle, he didn't run out and number the people, but he went to God and he said, uh, do I go up or do I stay? And God would tell him what to do and how to how to uh, face the battle or whatever. So here, this is what Joab, and Joab knew better. And Joab said unto the king, now the Lord thy God add unto the people, how many soever they be, a hundredfold, and, if, and that the eyes of my lord the king may see it. But why does my lord the king delight in this thing? Well, again, we want to see maybe that David, David was kind of boasting a little bit in himself at all that he had obtained because if you look back over in the in the scriptures here, we see that the Lord had blessed Israel and, and they had all kinds of uh, blessings. But anyway, in verse 4, Notwithstanding, the king's word prevailed against Joab and against the captains of the host, and Joab and the captains of the host went out from the presence of the king to number the people of Israel. And they passed over Jordan and pitched in Aral on, on the right side of the city that lieth in the midst of the river of Gad and towards Jazer. Then came, then came to Gilgad and, and to the land of uh, Teph, whatever that is, I can't pronounce it, Hashem. And they came to Dajah and 
about to Zion and came to the strongholds of Tyre and all the cities, Hevites and the Canaanites, Canaanites, and they went out to the south of Beersheba. So they, they went about numbering, numbering all the people. And when, in verse 8, and so when they had gone through all the land, they came to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and 20 days. And Joab gave up the sum of the number of the people unto the king, and there were in Israel 800,000 valiant men that drew the sword, and the men of Judah were 500,000 men. So we see that Israel was really uh, in good condition as to go out to war or to do whatever they wanted to. They had plenty of men, and besides that, God was on their side, and so they had no problems. But David, David was just a little bit... Uh, 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 higher than he should be. And so David, listen to this, in verse 10, and David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. And so David this morning as we all need to do, and as I mentioned even before the, uh, this class started, we as God's people, we need to understand that God is on the throne and we're to serve him and we're not to get out of our place and to think of ourselves as anything better than what we are. Now, we're just servants. We're slaves to the Lord, and we should be humble and we should not... Uh, take something for granted and try to uh, show that we're greater than we are. And here David, after the number came in, and of course that had been nearly 11 months, but the, he, he had, he, I'm sure had thought about this thing. And so he comes to the conclusion again here that he says, I've sinned, I've done wrong. And Lord, I want you to forgive me. And that this morning should be our cry to the, our Father God this morning. That listen, our little our little things that we just sometimes take so that are not really that bad. All oh, they that they ain't that bad. Listen, God understands them. And listen, He here this morning. He He encouraged or He 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 told David, you know, in a roundabout way to do this thing because that Israel had forsaken him and they were sinning against him. And so this was the way that he was going to punish Israel. Now notice, and so in verse 11, for when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, uh, David's seer, saying, go and say, uh, go, uh, and David, David said to, to the seer, says, go and say unto, the Lord said unto the seer, Go and say unto David, Thus saith the Lord, I offered thee three, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them that I may do it unto thee. Now here's what David has prayed. He says, Take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. Now he comes right back at him and says, All right, David, I'm going to send your uh, we call him a pastor now, or your advisor, or your seer, and he's going to he's going to talk to you. So when he got there, he said, "Here's what the Lord has told me to do to you." He says, "I'm going to give you three different choices to make that you can you can choose one of them for Israel." And so, uh, and so Gad in verse thirteen. So Gad came to David and told him and said unto him. Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in thy land? Or wilt thou flee three months before thy enemy while they pers pursue you? Or what? Or that there be three days of pestilence in the land? Now advise and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me. So the seer here said to David, he says, now these are the three choices. Now you go and think about these things and come back and tell me and I'm going to go to God and tell him what you've chosen. And David was a, was a man after God's own heart. And uh, 
David knew God, and uh, he 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 come up with this in, in verse fourteen. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. I, I, I don't know what to do, but let us fall now into the hands of the Lord, for his mercies are great, and let me not fall into the hands of man. And so the pursuer for him, that would pursue him for a month or a year, he didn't want that, and he didn't want anything to do with human beings because he knows the the way that humans think, and he knows the, the sin that is carried on in, in, in mankind. And so he says, whatever it be, I want it to be in God's hands. And so listen here, <clears throat> in, in verse 15, so the Lord sent a pestilence, which was supposed to be three days, I believe it was, uh, the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even unto the time appointed, and there died of the people from Dan even unto Beersheba, Beersheba 70,000 men. Now listen, that is a great army of men. That's a great man, a lot of men. And what was it all about? Listen, God was not actually punishing David as much as he was he was mad at Israel and he could get he could get the punishment out to Israel through David but anyway he killed 70,000 people with a plague in three days now notice in verse uh, verse 16 and when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it he done killed the 70,000 with this one angel and said to the the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people it is enough stay now thine hand and the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Agra the Jebusite now here's something this morning that will, is a comfort and of course when it says here in verse 16, the Lord repented himself of the evil. Now he forgot the evil that Israel had been doing against them, and he stopped this angel from killing the rest of Israel. He would have killed, he could have killed all of Israel in, in just a little while. But God seen that it was enough, and he said that he repented that he had uh, uh, caused all of this. But the thing of it is, this morning, this morning, we may not, we may not be uh, in our mind as, as David was, as wicked as he was, but listen, this morning, a sin is a sin. Now, regardless of, of, of what, what it comes to, if you sin and you do evil and you, you're out of the will of the Lord, listen, you can get in the same condition as Israel did. And this morning, we as God's people, boy, we need this morning so much to realize what a great God we have and how, how good he is to us to let us get by and to forgive us of the things that we do. And of course, when, when we sin, when we sin, we ask the Lord Jesus to ask God to forgive us. And listen, it's, it's different then than it was uh, now than it was then because they were under the law. But the thing of it is, still all in all, we don't need to wear our prayers out, if you would, if you would but we need to straighten up our act and we need to, we need to be knowing what we're doing and, and, and see that, that we are trying to serve the Lord and not be haphazard and, and go about and say, well, uh, I'll ask him to forgive me tomorrow, the next day, or something like that. Listen, that's that's not that's not pleasing to God. And listen, all of these all of these false religions and all of this all well, if you sin, you can uh, you can ask uh, the priest to pray for you, or he'll go to the Lord. Listen, people, that these things don't work. And what what we're doing a lot of times is not pleasing to the Lord. So here he stops the angel and uh, keeps him from killing the rest of them. And then verse 17, listen, 
And David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, talking, I, I, I'm talking about the people there. These sheep, what have they done? Let thy hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house. And so David was praying for the people. And listen, this is what, this is what God would have him to do. This is what God would have him to understand that, listen, he's not as great in, in his own mind sometimes as he thinks he is, but this brought that David back off of the high rock and put him down back where he was at. And so here he says in verse 18, And Gad came that day to David and said unto him, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord, and the threshing floor of Aram and the, the Jewish And David, according to the saying of Gad, went up as the Lord commanded. And Baryar, I can't pronounce it, looked and saw the king and his servants coming on towards him. And Aram went out and bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground. So he is recognizing David as the king, and he's he's showing ominous to him, and, and he said, Wherefore is my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To, to buy the threshing floor of thee to build an altar unto the Lord, that the plague may be stayed from the people. And so David come there with the intentions of doing this at what his his uh, uh, the Gad had said to him. And so he come there with this purpose of buying this. And this, the owner of this Avarah said unto David, Let my lord the king take and offer up what seemeth good unto him. Behold, here be oxen for burnt sacrifices and thrashing instruments and other instruments of the, of the oxen for wood. All of it for the sacrifice. And these things did Agarah as a king giveth unto a king. And he said unto the king David, The Lord thy God accept thee. And the king David said unto Agarah, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which does not cost me nothing. And so here David is saying to him, he's saying this this morning, hey, what I offer to the Lord is going to be mine. I won't take nobody else's and make an offering for it, but that that's mine, that's what I offer, and that's what I'm going to do. And so uh, uh, he said, David bought the, the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. And David built there an altar of, unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague was stayed from Israel. And so this morning we have what they call a plague in some senses that's raging in our country. They say it is. They tell us that, that so many is dying and so many is sick and so many is getting well and you got to do this and you got to do that. And I don't know. Uh, I, I, I have my feelings about this. But the thing of it is, this morning, could it be, could it be that the people have just got in such a condition that the Lord is putting this scare into their hearts and in their mind and there really is nothing else and there's nothing wrong but the scare, the fear that uh, they're going to die, the fear of, uh, uh, of being sick. Listen, this morning, fear is a great, is, is a great, uh, is a great thing. Uh, and and it, it'll turn, it'll turn people. And this morning, uh, we, we want to, we want to read just a little bit more here in the uh, in first chronicles 21 uh if i, I think i'm right on this uh, uh this in verse uh i'm gonna read this this is a continuation but look it just you don't have to turn but in first chronicles 21 it says uh, uh for the tabernacle of the lord which moses made in the wilderness 
and the altar of the burnt offerings were at that season. And I, that's not one one. But but David could not go before to inquire of God, for he was afraid because the sword of the angel of the Lord. And so David feared that angel, and he was afraid of it. And listen, this morning, uh, we we see some things in, in our scripture this morning uh, about uh, some other things I wanted to read if I could found it. But anyway, we don't want to, we don't want to get in, in a condition for that, uh, uh, that we don't fear the Lord. We need our, we need this morning to get ourselves settled and say, Hey, I'm your servant and I'm going to serve you and I'm going to serve you and I'm going to serve you because, uh, we see here what, what can happen in a matter of weeks. And uh, how the, how the, how quick it took, and the Lord is long suffering. And listen, this morning, if if you have problems, if you've got problems, listen, pray about these things, and and and, and ask the Lord for help. And and listen, if you've got things that just keeps on hanging on you and hanging on you, just keep on praying. The Lord will help you with these things. And it's like uh, uh, David there. He said, "I'm guilty." And that's the thing that the Lord wants to hear is, I'm guilty and I want you to help me. So this morning, I hope it's this, this little reading will help you to uh, be closer to the Lord and see how that, how that it's so easy to uh, get, into, get into something and so hard to get out of. As David, David they cost them 90,000 people, I think it was 70,000 people. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a terrible price to have to pay for for something that uh, that was going on. So thank you this morning for listening to me and I'm hoping you have a, a good evening. Thank you.